Okay, so welcome everyone to uh, Small Groups Team Tactics. Uh, here we're going to learn how to position different weapon styles uh, for the best offense and defense in a small group. We're going to learn what to do when you outnumber your opponent and when you are being outnumbered. Uh, we're going to learn a specific technique that you can use either uh, two or three on one in grouping up on an enemy like we were just doing earlier or how you can make that happen even in larger pods of people. It's called the death triangle. It's how you create a structure around an enemy so your positioning makes it essentially so they can't get out alive. And then we're going to learn other forms of maneuvering for advantage against other teams. Uh, how you might lure a team to break apart and create a hole. How you may flank. How you may use various curves around enemies uh, depending on how they're arranged. So, I'm going to start out with uh, some of the most basic and fundamental things we might all have some language and familiarity for. I need two pole arms and at least a sword border, if not two sword and borders, and a, and a flow and to, to make two pods of three out here. Two pods of three, each team has a pole. Show me what it looks like done well. side and three on this side. Line up like you naturally, intuitively think you'd most prefer to keep the advantage in a, in a 3v3 situation. Uh, so I, I notice a theme here. Do y'all in the audience notice a pattern of what's going on? Spear in the middle. A uh, fun term for it is the cock and balls. Where's the cock? The spear. Yeah. <laughs> Zale and Dyer, we got cocks and we got ball. The hairy, scruffy ones. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Asher's not a ball. There we go. There's a slight, I mean, this happens all the time, reasonably enough, right? Is there anything that Asher is not a ball but two pricks should do better to support his, his pubescent, prickly penetration of the other team? What, what, could, what could Asher do to maximize his effectiveness since he can't guard this cock as well? Blank. Okay, let's, what's that look like? Okay, and how has our situation changed? Sideways or no? Hopefully step, the spear Step back. Why, why, why the spear in the middle? To protect it. Yeah, to protect it. That's pretty duh, right? What happens if these people overcommit to protecting their spear? They get back. Yeah, they get hit in the back, right? So the most that intuitive thing for the fast fleet fighter to do, taking a wide flank, if, even if he doesn't get a chance to swing, his positioning is making a really bad potential energy of how this plays out. Even if, even if people stopped moving, which would be dumb, but even if people stopped moving here and, and Keelik couldn't decide who he had to commit to, that's very, very bad, right? Because their pull gets to work on two pretty open targets, and these guys get to match each other out. All Fish needs to do is make sure Rip doesn't charge Dyer. Okay. And this is still anyone's game, pull versus pull, but um, there's definitely an inherent disadvantage to whoever has enemies on opposite angles. Everyone see that? Any questions? Okay. Yes. So what I, this is not a good place for us to be. So I would tell you to switch to here. I'm going to switch to here, and now you get to work on a floor well protected, and I get to try and keep the spear off you. This undoes our disadvantage. Right. As long as he goes far enough away. Keen observation. Did, I, did everyone catch how a simple... We, we did the castle, right? Ah. The king of range got to castle behind a rook. Okay, and now a bo now this is an even match, and that's an even match. Keelik doesn't have to worry about his liver, and it's anyone's fight. It's still <laughs> not the greatest if Asher put the press on this. He's got Keelik on the scramble. What can these guys do to still maximize that? Their advantage. How can these guys maximize... Okay, I taught uh, more or less a step forward. Eric's <laughs> Rift is trying to cut it off. If you can create a situation where this pull still can safely go here, yeah, they can keep their press, the direction of their press, to keep the advantage they originally had from flanking. Make sense? All right, let's rewind back to the starting point. 
Any questions, concerns about demos we've done so far? Can everyone see this? Like, does this feel too artificial, or does that feel like that could play out on any given day on the field? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Cock and Balls has strong defense, especially if they know how to swap their players if they do get offended. How might you guys move to make the best of this from the start? Okay. They, they more or less did a lateral press, shutting out the capacity of the wide hook from the Florentiner. Yeah? That's fairly intuitive. Not a bad idea. Three more steps up the hill. There we go. There we go. So true on a limited field, that's even a consideration to take in though. If this is a bridge battle or an edge of the world, that's not your flank. Just saying for a big melee, the, the fast Florentina's flank is probably the open end of the field. Also makes sense. What's up? That was it. That was it. That was, okay. That was Anything from the audience you want to put in this picture? So we've gone over this really specific scenario and it's really awesome and you've opened eyes for like how advantageous it is for him to move out every once in a while. For those... Pause and reason. 